Good evening, folks. This is K5LYN. My name's Lynn. I'm in Austin. And we're going to talk uh, vintage radio here for about an hour. Uh, I'm on a vacuum tube radio, the Central Electronics 10A from the very early 1950s. Uh, I like to say that this was the radio that went on the air back when General Eisenhower was thinking about being president someday. Uh, it was originally paired with a uh, BC 458 VFO, but I figured out how to build an adapter so that I can use the output of the Drake R4A receiver, or for that matter, any of the Drake R4 series receivers, to be the VFO for this, so I'm transceiving in the manner of uh, radios that came along many years later. Uh, the 10A puts out 10 watts, and uh, I built a little amplifier out of a uh, night kit 50-watt CW radio, uh, and that puts out 40 watts, and I put 40 watts into a Drake L4B. And it looks like my meter is doing actually close to 500 watts right now. That's pretty amazing. If anybody has any objection as to my uh, signal quality, please let me know. And uh, the transceive function is uh, dependent on the stability of the R4 Drake receiver, which is not always exactly right. I've got some uh, calls listed down. I'll pick up some folks, and we'll pass it to Jay and to Rusty, and we'll go around the horn here. Mr. CXG, how you doing, Bob? K5LYN. Oh, doing pretty good. Uh, out here, we're, we're warming up finally. It was awful. It was 17 in the morning one day and 20-something the next, and we're starting to warm up. So uh, other than that, we're doing all right, doing just fine. Probably turn the one of the, maybe the RC-88 on over here for a little while and listen to the rest of the boat action in on it. And I don't know, uh, just rolling along. Hearing everybody pretty good. Right now the band's in good shape, and I'll keep it short. Uh, any of y'all come up with my resistors yet, let me know. I'm still looking for some 40 ohm at 20 watts. And uh, any of y'all come up with one of them, let me know. Uh, I'm good on QRZ for... And uh, finally, I got that straightened out finally. So it ought to be okay for a few months. And other than that, that's it. Catch you later, Lynn. K560. Now, Bob, have you got an email address on QRZ.com? Bob, have you got an email address on the QRZ uh, site? Well, maybe I'm not on the air. All right, moving on. WJ5MS, uh, what do you say, Jim? He was in there. I don't know. You're getting out, that's for sure. Um, WK5 MS, uh, out here in far Texas, it's 59 degrees. Uh, let me kill that, because it looks like the, the VA wants to tell me about a, uh, Anyway, uh, VA is trying to send me a, a reminder for my for my uh, VA appointment Friday. Anyway, for only uh, TS-820 and uh, uh, with an M, uh, not an MC-50, we got a D-104 on here. And uh, putting that over there in a SB-220. All of a, I don't know, uh, about 800 watts probably, something like that. And uh, matched it out there to my forever uh, unforgiving uh, wire that likes to come down with a uh, 2040 uh, tuner and it gets me by. <laughs> That's about the size of the limb. WJ5 MS. Very nice, strong signal uh, tonight into Austin, Jim. All right, by the way, I'm going to pick up uh, BTM, EF, WZ, TXW, RON, and SL. Then we'll give it to Jay. So, N5 BTM. Hey, Ralph, let's hear some more of that wonderful sounding Heath kit, K5LYN. Okay, don't talk too much about it, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, K5LYN and the net N5 BTM. Uh, good evening, one and all. Name is Ralph. We're in Spring, Texas, 30 miles north of Houston. And tonight we're using some of the green machine equipment and a SB100, a Sure 444 uh, microphone, a, a Drake MN 2700 tenor, and the amplifier is a Homebrew GS35B, and we're doing about, uh, about 800 watts this evening. Uh, trap antenna in the inverted V configuration. Uh, band in great shape. Uh, our project tomorrow, we've got a 922 here with the top off and the bottom off. It's upside down. 
and going to get a new or going to get a replacement socket for one of the 3500. So that's on the menu for tomorrow. Anyway, back to you. Everybody sounding good. N5B10. Spectacular, Ralph. Couldn't be any better. Great to hear you. Okay, Nick. K, hey, what's new on your end? How's the big project for July coming along? K5EF, K5LYN. Yeah, K5LYN in the group. This is K5EF. I tell you, uh, your radio sounds great, and I tuned off frequency, and your sideband suppression is very good, too. So, uh, your homebrewed uh, VFO-matic <laughs> is working just fine. Uh, any of that, uh, we're making some headway with, uh, with the um, uh, W9DYV symposium. Uh, again, we're supposed to have our first ad out in electric radio for it uh, this, uh, this coming March issue. And um, uh, tonight I'm running the KWM 230 L1 uh, amplifier and uh, the sloper array for um, for 75 meters. And um, the latest rig that I've been working uh, or restoring is a, a national NCX 1000. That's a thousand watt um, uh, input uh, transceiver they made. One of the, actually, I guess that was the last uh, radio national made before it uh, shut down. I only made about 300 of them, and um, not many of them actually worked. Uh, a lot of the ones that came out of the factory were, like, partially built. So, uh, in any event, I'm trying to get this one going. It's got bad heterodyne oscillator crystals. I had to uh, order some from um, uh, this place in England called Quartz Labs, and um, they've been very helpful um, in terms of... Um, uh, supporting us boat anchor guys now that International Crystal has uh, uh, pulled the plug on us. And um, I got some uh, carry oscillator crystals from them for the Drake um, RC, uh, T, uh, transmitter series, the T4s and uh, T4XBs and that sort of thing. And they work great. Uh, they just, I just put them right on in and uh, uh, my set started working again. So um, I hope to get some crystals out of these guys in the next... Uh, few weeks and I'll certainly let everybody know how they work out. But anyway, that's the latest here, um, uh, Lynn, K5LYN, it's K5EF. Hey, Nick. Somebody just called you, Nick. Who was that? N0FAB. Go ahead, Sap. Hey, just uh, wanted to wave a hand at Nick and uh, tell him uh, hello. I'm looking forward to slide out. Uh, I'm going to drag Lynn down with me, too, uh, uh, Nick. Oh, great. Okay, you running uh, uh, the hurricane tonight, or you just a tropical storm? No, it's just a tropical storm. It's a QRP mode. Uh, hello, uh, about 600 uh, watt point peaks on the uh, hurricane tonight, or the uh, tropical storm. Uh, <laughs> the tropical storm transceiver, uh, Nick. There you go. Okay. Hey, anything else new on your end, Sap? No, not much. Uh, Expecting some uh, uh, big winds here uh, Saturday, uh, 60 mile an hour plus. So that means uh, uh, going back out and uh, lowering the uh, beams again and trying to protect them. Uh, that's all. But uh, yeah, I just uh, I just tuned in and, and was uh, uh, guess uh, put me in line, uh, uh, Lynn. So uh, back to you, N zero S A D. Very good, Sap. Yeah, I don't know if you heard or not. This is the 10A transceive project you saw in uh, Jonesboro a couple of years ago. And uh, good to hear you this evening. And you've not got a nice signal in Dalton. All right, uh, Nick, I want to follow up with you right quick about the NCX uh, 1000. Some of the guys on the 20-meter net on Sundays, uh, there's two or three of them up there. And actually, when they get them working, they're pretty good. So uh, it sounds to me like it's worth a little uh, little time on it. Keep us posted on that project. And it was the Quartz Lab guys that got me the crystals to get the VFO Matic. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it takes them a while, but it's worth doing. Back to you, Nick. Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're one of the few that have still actually built this stuff for us hams, and, and uh, you know, you got to support them. And they, they're very friendly. These guys have been uh, extremely helpful, guys. Absolutely. Okay, and uh, if you all don't know what we're talking about, the Central Electronics and Vintage Radio meeting we've been having in Jonesboro, Tennessee, is down in the New Orleans area this year. So uh, I can't wait. We will be there in July. Any other comments, Nick? Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks like the uh, World War II Museum is going to be giving us some discount uh, tickets for folks that come down and want to see it. That's what we're hoping that we can, um, we're actually planning on having our seminars on Friday, uh, that's, uh, July 19th, 
in uh, the afternoon of uh, uh, the 20th, which is a Saturday. In the morning, they'll have the ham fest, of course. And then uh, we thought that uh, folks would like to go over to uh, uh, New Orleans to visit the uh, the uh, spectacular World War II Museum, which is just unbelievable. If you haven't been to it, you got to go. Spectacular, Nick. Looking forward to it. Anything else for the net this evening? Negative. I'm done. All right. Moving on. Let me pick up uh, KWOZ. What do you say, Dan? K5LYN. Yeah, good evening, Lynn and everybody else. Uh, I just uh, run an old heat kit, HW101, with a... Uh, Oh, an SB201 amplifier. Actually, that amplifier is in beautiful shape. It looks brand new, but anyway, we fixed this thing up. I guess it's working uh, okay for now. And driving it with a uh, Shure 444D mic, just the black one. And uh, driving the, well, I got a homebrew power supply hooked up to this radio, so uh, if it drifts a little bit, that's probably why. And uh, let's see, the antenna's a two element double bazooka up there. That, uh, yeah, that uh, World War II Museum in uh, New Orleans is really nice. I went to the uh, the one it's modeled after in Normandy, uh, by Normandy in France, been in there twice, and now uh, that one is one that's worth making a trip all by itself. <laughs> that whole area, of course, in Normandy, is uh, that's quite a place to visit. So, uh, anyway, yeah, but if somebody gets a chance to see that one in, uh, in New Orleans, that's worth the trip, no question. The it's not as good as the one in Normandy, but it's a very close second. That's it from here, Len. Thanks for letting us in, KWZ. Hey, Dan, satisfy my curiosity about something. The audio is just a little on the ragged side. Try backing the audio down. Let's see if that changes it some. Oh, yeah, shoot, I probably had it uh, way up there where it didn't belong. Is that any better? <laughs> it's it's about 100 times better. Yeah, I, I guess I was turning wrong now up there for a while. Yeah, no difference in output, but here anyway. Oh, yeah, much, much better. Sounds nice now. All right, thanks for your comments, uh, Dan. Anything else for the net this evening? Uh, nope, that's it. Lots of projects. I got an old uh, Helicrafters Loudon Boomer here I fixed up the other day and got it going. I just want to fix the grid current reading, and I think I've got that done, so we'll probably have that on yet tonight, so maybe I'll check back in later. I've got a Loudon Boomer by another company uh, out in the garage we'll get to one of these days, so let's Stay in touch on that deal. All right, let me pick up uh, TXW, RON, and SL, and then we'll give it to Jay. TXW, what do you say, George? Hello, Lynn, and all around the net. Happy to be here for the finest hour amateur radio for the week. And I'm on a rice box, so I'll just say I hope everybody's doing well and turn it back to that. WB5TXW. And I think I was up the band. Does this sound better? Well, I was going to say you sounded up the band a little bit, but uh, yes, you're, the answer is yes. Yeah, we all climbed up there a little bit. This is better. Thanks for the correction, George. We'll be in touch. W5RON. Hey, Ron, uh, give it a try. K5LYN. Well, Ron might have moved on. WA5SL. Scott, what do you say? Yeah, good evening to you, Lynn, and the rest of the group here on uh, the Boat Anchors Net uh, like George always says, the greatest night on radio. Uh, uh, tonight we're on the little heat kit HW12. That's the only thing we've been uh, playing with lately. Uh, I intended to uh, put the SB220 in line today, but I went and uh, checked on the tractor and the battery is dead down there. I spent all my time down there messing with that. But anyway, uh, hot water 12 here, sure 444D microphone, the black one like Dan said, and uh, feeding all that into a full wave delta loop about 45 foot to the feed point. Uh, anyway, uh, glad you uh, glad you guys keeping this up, and appreciate you letting me get in here, and uh, we'll turn it back to you and let you pick up some more folks. Thanks for picking me up, WA5SL. Back to you, Lynn. The band's great tonight, isn't it? Great to hear you, Scott. Beautiful signal on the Hot Water 12 there. Hey, let me call a friend of mine, see if he's lurking out there, and then we'll give it to Jay. K0AS. Hey, Arnie, are you out there somewhere? K5LYN. Uh, he came by last week saying he wanted to hear this rig. Maybe he'll be around. Okay, Jay, talk to us. Uh, KM5QS, K5LYN. Yeah, uh, hello there, KM5QS. <laughs> I was just trying to see if the bird would shut up. Um, I'm coming to you all this evening on the Kenwood 830 uh, station with the 30L1 
and the same old homebrew antenna and feed line and tuner and all that stuff. So uh, everybody sound good so far this evening? And if I sound a little distracted, I probably am, but I'll get over it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. Okay, who Lynn hadn't talked to yet? Anybody want to check in to the Boat Anchors Net? Come now, please. Kilo, Bravo, Charlie, November. Whiskey 5, Delta Kilo. K-5, Bravo, Charlie, November. K-5, Kilo. Okay, hang on, I'm still writing. Um... I got, wow, <laughs> I got a bunch of them there, um, and there was a bunch of Dublin at the first part, but let's start with LYL. I, I, I just dumb push to talk triggers messing up. I thought I had it, but I don't. I guess I need to d get a new one. That's KA5 LYL, Todd, Corpus Christi, and I should be at least a little bit louder this week because I got an amplifier King cable made for this, man, I don't know why, it's 37 years old and it's still just an old radio. Okay, well, that's what we're on, a, an old radio, a 37-year-old uh, Kenwood TS-930, 930, not the 940, older, the predecessor. And um, we're driving my uh, our amplifier with it tonight. Well, that's because I only tuned it with 50 watts of drive. I should have tuned it with 90 watts of drive. There you go. What happened? Uh, driving, an, uh, driving an Ameritron AO80, the original one, which has a 3500Z2. No processor. I am not running the processor. So generally, the radio puts out less when you do not run the processor. So, no processor. <clears throat> Heil HM12 for the microphone. Um, all that into... It sounds like I stirred up some noise or somewhere like some power lines somehow around here or something. Um, so I got some fuzz in my race for keys a little bit. You know what I mean. Uh, into an off-center fed dipole, 35, maybe 40 feet in the air. Somewhere along in there at the speed point. Uh, like I said, I hope it sounds okay. Back to that. Okay, hey, hey, they're all wild. Yeah, Todd, it sounds way much better without the processor. It sounds really good tonight. Um, and like that, please don't whistle into the amplifier. My ears don't like it. <laughs> anyway, no, it sounds good, Todd. It really does. That old 930 is a good rig. Um, anything else? Mm, I'm, yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. And this is, I don't know. If it's not, if, some, if someone pops up, pops up and says it's not the place for it, okay. But I have a question about... The, about two days after I got this thing, the um, Alpha Tango, that's the auto tuner, the AT930, and it quit. Not completely, but it, it's developed issues, and I thought, this radio's so old, why not just yank it out and make it a non-AT model? But I need a uh, an interconnect cable, a coaxial interconnect cable in there uh, that was present before. Anyway, uh, yeah, I want to make it a non-AT 930, or um, if somebody has an AT 930 tuner that's known to work good, uh, could somebody point me in the direction? Back to that. Like I said, if there's no place for it, if it's too new, okay, I accept that. Back to that. Okay, if I go on. Well, just real quick, and then we'll get on down the road. Uh, uh, if you don't have the cable to the jumper to put in its place for right now, just leave the unit in there and just don't use it. Um, or you might uh, just jiggle the connections and stuff around. It's an old radio. It could, your connectors could have a little bit of uh, corrosion or something. You might not even be able to see it. Um, my 830 had that problem. I fixed it just by moving stuff around. So, But anyway, just um, don't take it out until you're ready to replace it with something. Then you don't need that little dealy. But uh, anyway, it's just my thoughts. Got, I'm going to kill this thing. You got something going on with your audio, Jay. It's like you're driving an amp with an RF sensor in it, and sometimes it kicks in, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Uh, how about, well, I don't know. Maybe I wasn't holding the switch down good or something. How about now? 
it's still doing it off and on and now I got an issue I got to cure this dumb push the talk trigger or just use the button on the mic but yeah um, it comes and goes well okay I'm not sure what the deal is uh, okay anyway thank you Todd uh, DK can you copy me okay yeah, good evening, Jay. W5DK. Um, this is Don, for people that don't know. I'm in Spring Branch, and I agree with you, Jay. Uh, example, this evening I had to do the, the jiggle test on the, the key line to get the, uh, the amp going. So I'm, I'm, I'm running a TR4, the same old radio every week, and uh, an L4 amp. So we're running a little power using a D104 tonight again, and that's just going through an old heat kit tuner out to the double extended ZEP. I'm in the Spring Branch, uh, Comal County area, north of San Antonio, so thanks for uh, running, being one of the net controls, Jay, and, and uh, Lynn, Lynn was strong earlier. Good to hear you, everybody. And, uh, I'm glad everybody's trying to check in, and, and we're all getting it done every week. Back to you, Jay, W5DK. Okay, Don. Uh, good deal. All righty. I uh, made a little change there. And, uh, it's when when I quit talking, it tends to drop out, uh, even though I don't. Yep. Well, no, no. I see what's going on now. I don't know why it's going on, but I see what's going on. Um, BCN, Coy, give us some, and I'll be adjusting things while you're talking. Okay, JKM5QS and Annette K5BCN. Good evening to you and everybody on it. Appreciate you getting coming in there and calling it, having having Lynn out. And hello to Lynn. Everybody in here. Uh, Seems like the band's pretty good shape. I'm copying you pretty good. We're running the 520s tonight, driving an 811 H amplifier. Antenna's a half wave dipole and a little Heil HM5 microphone. So that's the setup here. And I uh, hope you copy all right. And running about oh, picking about 600 watts. So uh, here she come back, Jay. I hope I talk long enough to uh, let you work on that thing a little bit. By the way, I'll give you the temperature. It's 40 degrees right now. It's 20, it was 19 this morning. So it's been, had some cool temperatures, but it's uh, supposed to warm up during the week and have storms Saturday, I think. So anyway, we'll shoot her back there to you. Maybe you found something. I hope you did anyway. It's all aggravating, I know. So appreciate it. KM5 QS and that K5 BCM. Okay, Corey. Yeah, I think I've got a little issue with the mic gain control on this thing. Uh, I wiggled it a little bit. Maybe it'll hang in there. Seems like it still might be dropping every once in a while. So I may have to uh, get in there and wiggle some stuff around again. But uh, it's sounding good down here. No problem. It's 59 degrees in Alice, Texas, down here in the tropics. We're uh, sharing the same temperature as uh, old Jim's got down there in the valley too dang close to Mexico, but anyway, <laughs> all right, good deal, thank you, Coy, five, Quebec, your turn, sir, you fixed yeah, it, Jay, KM5, uh, and the next, KE5Q, uh, Jim, and Plano, and uh, good to hear, hear everybody tonight, the band does sound like it's in great shape, uh, Sounds uh, sounds real good, and uh, uh, we're running uh, my uh, my uh, dad's uh, Swan 350 uh, that uh, he bought new, and I think about uh, I don't know 1968 maybe. No, 19. I can't remember now. It wasn't that late? It was more like uh, 1964. Is what it was. 1964. Anyway, uh, the Swan 350 and uh, the original Turner 454C microphone, and that's going into the uh, Ultimax 8040 uh, double bazooka antenna. And uh, uh, and as I said, everybody's sounding good. Coy, you sounded real good there. And yeah, that last transmission, Jay, uh, you you weren't breaking up there. It, it, it sounded to me like. Like, uh, you know, it was just uh, going from low to high from, a, you know, your signal was jumping up uh, louder, like an antenna or something. But that last transmission, you, you sounded really good. Appreciate you calling the net. KM5Q, that's in the net. This is KE5Q. All righty, Jim. Yeah, good deal. 
No, it's uh, I had some issues with the mic gain control on this thing at one time, and I can still see it doing it a little bit, and I think that's what it probably is. I wiggle it around. I'll uh, I'll put some. Uh, it keeps messing with me. I'll I'll drown it in in uh, deoxid or something. <laughs> Boudreau agrees. I think I'll drown him in in uh, picante sauce. I don't know, but anyway, that's the bird, of course. All right, thank you, Jim. Um, anyone else for the boat anchors net again this evening? Coming out, please. W five R O N. W five H A R. Kilo Alpha five Charlie Delta. Uh, okay, station ending in Oscar. Whiskey Alpha 5 Golf Fox Oscar. Okay, I got four down here. I know I missed one or two, but uh, I think Ron's back in there, Lynn. You might be able to hear him better than me, but go ahead, Ron. Uh, yes. I, uh, boy, I tell you what, I've got to get up against this microphone to modulate. Oh, uh, yeah, but it does. And uh, so I guess uh, I, I think eventually I'm gonna put my D-104 on this. I gotta get a spike plug, but uh, I'm on my Schwann. I mean, correct. I'm on my SB-100, and I'm going to get an amplifier uh, to go with it. And uh, but I'm just running a barefoot. Metro uh, 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 voice 44 uh, microphone, but uh, I guess it's good. According to, I got a good accurate meter. It's doing everything I think it's supposed to. It's just not enough. WB5 RON Ron over here north of Shawnee, Oklahoma, little town of Meeker. Yeah, okay, Ron. Yeah, I think you, you just may have a mismatch with the microphone, because uh, if you've got it turned all the way up and it's not doing anymore, I think you've got an impedance mismatch or something there, or it's just the microphone is not doing what it's supposed to. You were perfectly clear, and I could understand everything you said. It's just you don't have a whole lot of of uh, audio or modulation, I guess, or whatever you want to point of not modulation on Anyway, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm not sure I know what I mean. But it sounds good, but a different microphone might be the answer. What do you think, uh, Lynn? Well, I think the audio quality was quite good, uh, but the gain's not there. So, I, I, Ron, I wish you'd just put the same microphone that we hear on the Swan on that. We could tell you a lot more. A lot more. Back to you, Jay. Okay. Good deal. Thank you, Ron. Oh, we'll uh, catch in a little bit or next time or, or whichever. And I believe I heard a fella in there called uh, Fred HTR. Uh, come up the band just a hair, unless you've already done that, and come on in here. Okay, uh, Jay, I think I've done it. Have I done it? Over? Yes, sir, you have. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah this is W5HTR in Richardson, Texas. I'm talking on an old TR3 with a little help from an FL2000B. Antenna's an inverted V, and uh, the microphone is a Shure 444 4 Delta. Popular mic. Um, this TR3 is, is prone to move around a little bit. I guess they do that. It's, it's an old, old radio. But, in fact, I might bring it to Belton and try to swap around and Maybe uh, upgrade to a TR4 of some some sort. And uh, that's about the story. I'll say hello to you and Lynn, everybody else on the net uh, who I don't know, and a few that I do know, and two others I remember. I think uh, Coy was in there and uh, and Jim was in there. Um, otherwise, uh, I, I've been in and out of the room, and, and that's about as far as my memory goes. So uh, everything's going good. Looking forward to Belton, and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys down there. So back, uh, back to the net, I guess. K uh, KM5QS. In uh, I guess where were you? You were in. I know where you're at. You're at. Now I can't remember where it is. Wherever you are, Jay. W5HTR in Richardson. <laughs> 
I'm still down here in Alice, Texas. I have to be careful when I say that because sometimes people think I'm saying Dallas, but I'm not. I'm down here in Alice where the woman of the same name does not have a restaurant, at least not that I know of. Uh, <laughs> 28 days and approximately 17 hours, I'll be on the parking lot with the barbecue pit waiting for all you hungry people to show up. So, uh, yeah, can't wait for Belton either. Uh, thank you, Fred. Uh, TR3, said it, they, they do sound good. When you get them there and after a while you leave them on long enough, they will get fairly stable. But, well, most of the time. Anyway, I'm sure somebody would be glad to relieve you of it uh, when you get down there. All right, let me move along here. Um, Charlie Delta, I think that signal is emanating from New Braunfels somewhere. Yeah, Roger there, Jay, KM5QS, uh, KL7, Charlie Delta, Mike down here in, in New Braunfels, just north of San Antonio. Everybody's coming in real good tonight, and my uh, old Halicrafter station is stable enough. I hope I'm on frequency and don't drift off. Anyway, tonight I'm running the Halicrafter's Twins SX-117 receiver and HT-44 transmitter using the receiver VFO for transceive operation. I have the matching speaker and power supply, real nice looking complete station. And I'm running that into a heat kit, Sugar Baker 220, running about uh, 800 watts, something like that. Uh, that feeds coax out to my uh, dipole up about 25 feet. No tuner in the line, just uh, straight out there. But it's cut for 80 meters, 75 meters, and everything seems to work fine. I can switch between my dummy load and tune up, and when I switch to the antenna, it tunes exactly the same way so oh that's cool i uh i kind of put my central electronics 100 v off to the side i'm still scratching my head over how to get to those uh resistive dividers for the bias supply because i i something's wrong with that but they're under the band switch and if you've ever looked under a central electronics 100 v and looked at the band switch uh, I don't know how I'm ever going to get to them. I'm still working on that. But the latest project, when I push that off to the side, I'm trying to get my uh, permanent AM station set up. And my uh, I, I'm almost there. I just need to uh, hook some coax up to it, and I think it's ready to go. Anyway, that's a Harvey Wells TBS-50D, which is the, it, the D model. I guess they call it the deluxe model. It had a microphone preamp in it so you can run a D104 or a Sure triple four, anything like that into it instead of a carbon mic and that transmit I have the matching power supply by the way and that transmitter was built between 1950 and 1955 and that's kind of the vintage I was going for here uh, it sold for $137 in uh, uh, probably about the middle of those years and the receiver is a Hammerlin Super Pro 600 JX26, which was made for the Signal Corps. This particular model was turned over to the U.S. Army in 1952. It has 20 tubes, and even back then it sold for $1,250. And then the amplifier I'm going to use with it is a EF Johnson Thunderbolt, uh, built between 57 and 63. And it sold in 63 for 660 bucks, and 57 sold for $525. So you can see those old ro ro uh, radios back when I was a teenager. I, I couldn't afford them because that was a lot of money back then. Anyway, that's about it uh, from here, Jay. It's uh, warmed up significantly today, and I've had... Uh, I've got an outdoor kitchen with a sink and a faucet, and I have to put a cardboard box over the faucet and stick a treble light under there to keep it from freezing. I already went through one freezing problem, and I don't want to do that again. But I unhooked it all today, and we're hoping for better weather. That's it from here, Jay, KM5QS. Everybody sounds great. KL7, Charlie Delta. Question on here.
Good deal, Mike. Uh, somebody's got a question for you out there. And Lynn, let me turn it to you. I've got a little minor deal to uh, help my wife with. I have to leave the room for a bit. The next on my list was was GFO. Um, and I'll be back when I can. KM5 QS. Yeah, okay. We'll pick up uh, GFO. That's Gary in just a minute. Who had a comment about uh, Mike Station? That was me, KA5LL. I just wanted to know which receiver. He uh oh, something ain't going. Oh, I see. Help my turn to kick the, the amp off back in. I was just wondering which receiver he was running. I thought he said the hammer on the SP600, but I could have been wrong. Uh, comment, Mike? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it's the JX-26 model, which is, I believe, the uh, uh, military nomenclature is R274C or something like that. Hallicrafters made one. And Hammerlin also made one. That was for the Signal Corps, U.S. Army Signal Corps, QSL. Roger. I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with the SP-600s because I had one in the 80s for a little while. Long story, but I'll just leave it at that to uh, keep keep talk time short. KA-5, L Wild, back in it. Very good, Todd. All right, and uh, Mike, you're sounding good in Austin. Anything else on your end before I pick up Gary? No, that's about it. Uh, I can tell you that SP-600 with 20 tubes in it. Uh, if something goes wrong with it, it's probably a tube, QSL. Probably so. All right. Did I hear CIV in there? Yeah, hey, Mike, you got a carrier on that thing. I don't know if you knew that or not. Comment? Well, I do, too. <laughs> Jim, thanks for your thoughts, though. Hey, let me, Jim, I'll get back to you in just a minute. Let me think of somebody else who's been uh, in line there. Uh, Mike, are we through on your end? Yeah, he said I had a carrier on it. I just... I got a scope on it that I monitor all the time, and when I push the button, there's a real light carrier, so that ain't no problem to balance out. I just got to take the lid off and turn a screw. Yeah. I I just, I, usually you don't. That's why I said so. Yeah, it's faint, but it's there. I rolled up and heard it. Okay, okay. well, these uh, carrier balance, uh, balance modulators can drift some, just like the uh, variable frequency oscillator does. Hey, Gary, WA5GFO, how you copy? K5LYN. Uh, I copy you. Can you copy me? I'm hearing you great. By the way, I'm on my 10A with the homebrew uh, transceive adapter and the L4B. Over. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, this is WA5GFO. And, uh, you know, before I tell you what I, what, what my, my rig is, uh, you know, I was wondering if you'd ever considered, uh, you know, uh, RON's, uh, signal, uh, if, if, if it could be a genetic defect, you know, you named off a lot of things, uh, but, uh, in Ron's case, uh, anyhow, uh, we're, we're running a Kenwood 820. And uh, just got the microphone connector back together earlier. Uh, was uh, was wrestling with it, having some uh, some uh, Twilight Zone experiences. So uh, you know you plug it in without the uh, without the shield on it, <laughs> and it works. You put the shield back on it, it won't work. You take the shield off, it'll work. So anyhow, I went through that for about an hour, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, finally, finally, finally got the silly thing uh, uh, back together and, and working. So, uh, let's see. Uh, that, that's about it. Uh, you know, running 100 watts uh, through a little uh, uh, MFJ tuner up to an inverted V at 60 feet. And the microphone's a, uh, a MC50. So, uh, that's that's uh, my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> K5LYNWA5GFO. Okay, Gary, nice signal into Austin. Been too long since we've uh, heard you. Glad you came by tonight. Let me say hello to Mr. KB5CIV. Hey, Jim, great to hear you. How are things? K5LYN. Oh, I was just passing through, Lynn. He uh, turned us on for a couple minutes and thought I'd come in and say howdy duty. I still got to go back in the house. Well, glad you came by. Come by when you can. I know you're busy. Right here, right here. It sounds like y'all are still having fun. Yeah, we're rocking and rolling here. All right, uh, was there anybody else on Jay's list that I failed to pick up before I give this thing to Rusty? Here's K5LYN. Who was that? 
Uh, uh, oh, yeah, Seb, uh, we didn't give you a chance to talk some more. Over to you, K5LYM. All right, Lynn, very good. Yeah, I just wanted to jump in uh, real quick. And, uh, boy, man, Signal's a great man, a great condition tonight. I don't know why, but I'm glad to see that, it's, uh, that uh, everybody's over here bouncing the estimators here. So, uh, in fact, I might even uh, uh, kick this hurricane up to... Uh, uh, see if I can tickle uh, uh, Nick's nose with his estimator here. Let me try this out. All right, here we go. This, this is hurricane power, Lynn. Oh, uh, my goodness, yep. <laughs> uh, I always like to say running legal limit barefoot. So, Lynn, back over to you. Hey, I didn't ask you, Seth. You're going to join us down in New Orleans come July? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I want to do that, and... Uh, I'm going to see if I can't uh, grab that little scrawny guy up at Pleasant Hope by the collar and bring him with me. Okay. All right. Well, I think, uh, you know, uh, that's going to be the uh, the next great meeting of the minds when it comes to vintage sideband. So I'm looking forward to it. Back to you for one more. Oh, yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what, guys. If you haven't made the Jonesboro uh, uh, event uh, before in the past, you got to make this. I'll tell you what, we have such a great time. Uh, nice old radios, some rare, pretty rare stuff been displayed uh, over the years, and uh, uh, just some great uh, info on uh, boat anchors and stuff. It's just a great time. Uh, uh, I, I only missed the first year, and uh, I never missed any after that, so uh, it's a fun time. So uh, come on down to Nolan, man, get some crawfish and some gumbo, and uh, you'll, you'll probably never leave after that. So uh, hope you all... Uh, are doing. I hope everybody's doing well, and I'll send it back to you, Lynn, uh, M0, S-A-D. Well, I'll tell you what, Zap, uh, we're going to rock and roll in New Orleans compared to Jonesboro. <laughs> it's going to be a great meeting. Okay, hey, Rusty, WK5R, pick this thing up and run with it, K5LYN. Uh, somebody else in there, K5LYN, w- <coughs> K5R. <laughs> Good evening, everybody on the Bone Anchors net. Name here is Rusty, calls Whiskey Kilowatt Fire Radio, uh, located up here in Northeast Texas about halfway between Dallas and Tyler. And I'm running the usual FT-101 EE, Yesu. Microphone is a, uh, a Electro Voice 641. And I am driving the Homebrew GS-35B amplifier. And that's going into the fan dipole up there. Uh, it's got 40, 80, 160 meter legs on it. No tuner. So with that... No, by the way, I don't know if Jay's back in the room or not. I was going to tell him. Uh, uh, I just didn't know that. Was, uh, that was Mel's diner. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I got my little test center built for uh, these swan supplies. And starting to work on that. I've got 16 of them sitting here uh, to work on. So I'm going to be busy a while. Anyway. Who else for the boat agents that come now? Sierra. Sierra Echo Delta. Kilo 5, Lima Tango. Whiskey Alpha 5, Delta, Sugar Sugar. Well, I think my relay hung, but I'll try it again. Anybody want to stick in the boat agents that come now? Mike Tango Tango. Three check. Kilo 5, Echo Delta. I think I heard a M5YI or something like that. Go ahead. Yeah, it's a K5YI. Yeah, it's a K5YI. Go ahead. Okay, appreciate it, Chair Rusty. Uh, this is K5YI. Bazooka antenna using a D104 microphone. Everybody is sounding good tonight. Over. Roger, Roger. Yeah, I copied that all up through the Yahoo there. <laughs> Somebody goofing off out there. I don't know who, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the, the D04 is sounding good there. Anything else from that? Oh boy, somebody's tuning up right on top. Of hey, Rusty. You, you missed several there. You got SED, LT, DSS, and MTT. Okay. You'll have to help me there because I, I lost my receipt there for a minute. Uh, all right. Uh, 
68 in Oklahoma. All right, K0 FCD, go ahead, Steve. Oh, good evening, everybody out in Radio Land, and uh, thanks, Rusty. Oh, it's uh, it's good to be back, and it's bad to be back. A little cooler than in the Bahamas, but that's the way it goes. Back on the boat anchor, the Kenwood 520, uh, 30L1, uh, dipole up about 40-odd feet, and that's about it from Tyler, Texas. Back to you, Rusty, K0 SCD. All right, sounding good as usual there, Steve, and uh, you sounded good from the Bahamas the other day. All right, uh, LT, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Rusty. This is Kilo 5 Lima Tango. Wow, located in Bernie, Texas, uh, about 30 miles north of San Antonio. Uh, everybody's sounding good tonight. And Rusty, thank you for picking up the net this evening. Sounding good. Uh, running the usual tonight, running all Heath Kit. Got the SB 101 running. Uh, got the uh, Heath Kit SB 221 running. Putting out about a little over 1,000 watts, going out to uh, double extended zip, uh, running through the cedar trees. So everybody's sounding good. Beautiful day down here once it warmed up and the clouds burned off. Got to enjoy a nice sunset, so everything's good. And back to you, Rusty. K5LT. All right, sounding good from down that way. All right, uh, WA5MTT. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, okay, Rusty. Uh, I hope I can compete with the uh, with the guy uh, on AM, but uh, here goes. Uh, it's Mike, WA5MTT in Round Rock tonight, Roman. Collins, wing him on this line, 75 S2, uh, receiver 32 S1 transmitter. We've got those operating in a transceive mode. And a 30 S1 amplifier, and of course the uh, 312 B4 station console mic is Lecture Voice 664. Um, you got a bunch to pick up here, so uh, just in here for the count. Uh, back to you, Rick. Okay, thank you, Mike. Collins station sounds good as usual there. Uh, Okay, there was one out of them four that Lynn gave me that I missed. Uh, uh, who was that coming out? Whiskey Alpha 5, Delta Sugar Sugar. All right, yeah, DSS, go ahead. Yeah, uh, this is WA5 DSS. Name is Bill. We're in Kerrville, Texas. Uh, tonight we're running the TS520 uh, into a uh, uh, off-centered uh, dipole up about 40 feet. Uh, we're running barefoot, so... Not sure how many can uh, can hear me, but anyway, uh, everybody sounded good, and uh, we'll just turn it back. Uh, uh, Rusty, I'm not sure what your call is, but uh, I'll go ahead and take it. WA5 DSS clear. Okay, WA5 DSS, WK5 on its whiskey kilowatt five radio, and uh, what well, you're doing just fine up here, uh, but as long as that. Guy out there on AM don't come in there with his funky tunes and everything. Okay, uh, who else for the boat anchors unlimited come now? Whiskey India Sierra. No, that's a W5 IS. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, good afternoon, Rusty and all uh, boat anchor crews. It's pretty good except for the QRM tonight. I'm running barefoot on my DR4. Into a double bazooka, a dual band antenna up about 35 foot, and you should sure clip a full mic. And hope everybody can. Whoop, my power got dropped off a hole. Something happened to my antenna. So, 63, W5 iron. Are you doing just fine there, Doug? Coming over the top of all that interference there. I right, appreciate you checking in there. We'll catch you next time. Who else for the boat anchors unlimited come now? Hey, Rusty. Rusty, go ahead. Yeah, I, I wasn't speaking of Mel's Diner. I was uh, in reference to a musical thingy there a few days back, and you had someone else in that group while ago. Uh, you had a recheck trying to get in. I didn't catch who it was. You were working up again. Okay, uh, I heard Mike again. When, was there somebody else besides Mike now? Well, we got Jim, W-D-5-J-K-O. Uh, Hello. Okay. Uh, did you have a recheck? Hang on there, Jim. Uh, did you have a uh, a recheck, Mike, or was it somebody else? That's Dan. I was going to recheck. Oh, Dan? Okay. I'll, I'll take Dan on a recheck, and then I'll, I'll pick up Jim there. Go ahead, Dan. Okay. I just want to tell Lynn, this is that loud and boomer amplifier. Got it hooked up to a... Uh, uh, 520 here, just 
driving it a bit. And that's it, 700 watts. Yeah, I might send you an email about that, Dan. Oh, Roger. Back to you, Rusty. Okay. Uh, 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 JKL, go ahead, Jim. Okay, Rusty. Been a long time since uh saw some of your kits there on the tailgate. Um, this is Jim, WD5JKO in uh, Round Rock. Just uh, hadn't been on the boat anchor net in a while and uh, long enough to say, wait a minute, you guys changed your time, but I guess uh, the band was crapping out earlier or something. So anyway, this is Jim in Round Rock. We're, the, we're with the uh, Central Electronics uh, 20A. And uh, 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 with a Gonset GSB-201 uh, linear amplifier with four 811s in it, D-104 mic. So that's it here. Back to you there, Rusty, this WD-5JKO. Another WD-5JKO, WK-5R, and the boat anchor. Yeah, mighty fine there, Russ. <laughs> yeah, sounding real good on that thing. Uh, uh, yeah, we did. Uh, when the time changes back again, we'll probably settle back in on the regular time at 7.30 because that'll be about what time it is right now instead of 6.30. So it, it, the conditions ought to be pretty good then. Okay, who else for the bow anchors come now? I'll do it one more time, then I'll throw it back to Jay. I mean, uh, Lynn there and see what happens. Anybody else for the boat anchors before I turn it back to uh, Lynn? Come now. 85. I caught something with a 5 in it through the, 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 QR, the QRZ. Uh, the interference. Who's that? Uh, Kilowatt Bravo 5, Sierra. Okay, I got Kilowatt Bravo 5, but I didn't get the second. Anyway, go ahead. This is KB5SQG. Name is Bob, Bravo, Oscar, Bravo here in Granbury, Texas. I just thought I'd just jump on here and say good evening to everyone here on the net. I've been listening to you guys for some time. I thought I'd just come in and say hello to y'all. So that's all I've got here. This is KB5SQG. Okay, you'd be sounding fine from Granbury over there if it wasn't for the uh, interference. So, uh, appreciate you checking in there. Uh, I'll try it one more time, then I'm going to throw it back to Lynn there. One last call from here. Anybody want to check into the uh, boat under's net? Come out. Okay, Lynn, you're back. 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 Okay,
uh, Georgia, Florida. Where are you guys? Talk to us. K5LYN, listening. W0SOH. Okay, W0, that went by me too fast. <laughs> Straighten me out there. Go ahead. W0SLH, Whiskey Zero Sierra, Lima Hotel, over. Nice signal into Austin, Texas. My name is Lynn, over. Roger, Lynn. Name here is Mike, located in Wichita, Kansas, over. Oh, yeah, okay, uh, Mike in Wichita. That's right, we've talked to you before once you said Wichita. Uh, that uh, that uh, rang a bell with me, and I wasn't uh, born too far from there, Winfield, Kansas. Roger, Roger, yeah, that's uh, a little bit south and east of me. Yeah, yeah, still an interesting place. Hey, you got a nice signal. Tell us about your station. I run an old Kenwood TS-520 and a uh, double bazooka up about uh, 50 feet over. Now, is there an amplifier behind that 520? No negative. It's just running 100 watts. Over. Hey, what a nice signal into Austin. That just shows we got propagation tonight because uh, I would have sworn you were running a kilowatt. It's doing great. Okay, Roger, Roger. Thank you. Glad you came by. All right, who else for the net? K5LYN, listening. KB0, UOA. Whiskey Delta 5, Alpha, Delta Charlie. ADC, and I think I heard Steve in there, too, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure what I heard there. Who, who was the person that was not ADC? Well, that was the UOA. UOA, okay. Well, I, I better <laughs> pick him up while we can hear him right quick. Then we'll get back to uh, ADC. KB0, UAC, which stuff? I'm not on the radio. I can't wait tonight. I'm on the radio. It's running 100 watts. So, uh, guys, doing your airwind stuff. You just check me in, then. KB0, you always. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Go ahead, man. Boy, I just barely hear him, and I usually hear him great. All right. Okay, Rick, go ahead. Talk to us. Good evening, Lynn. This is Rick, WD5ADC, down in the Rio Grande Valley. And uh, I'm on the uh, GSB 100 tonight, uh, Drake 2B receiver. And uh, uh, the real one amp uh, inverted V up about 30 feet. Rick, you know that's always one of my favorite stations on the net because you're the only guy that's ever had one on here, and it still sounds great. <laughs> I guess I'll keep it going. It's uh, I, I've got to get some of these other radios exercised, though. I turned a Tempo 1 on tonight, and, uh, man, that thing is, uh, I better start using it. Uh, that's all i got to say. Well, probably so, but it'll never sound as good as the Gonset. Uh, it doesn't have the mystique to it. I know. See, I'm on phasing audio tonight, too. This is a Central Electronics 10A, so, uh, you know, phasing is still hard to beat. It's uh, totally different than Crystal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure is. All right, uh, any other new projects in the works? No, oh, uh, I'm going to have to tear up the KWM2 apart and find out where that. I just haven't got around to it where the smoke came from. I'm trying to I'll get that off the bench. I've, uh, in all my wisdom, I make this, all this stuff look nice and neat, but, man, it is hard to get out to work on it. Well, stuff is pretty crowded on KWM2. I used to have one, you know, and it's a nice radio, but, uh, I mean, they, 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 they crammed a 32S1 and a 75S1 into one box. Yeah, they sure, they sure did, I say that. It's, uh, it's a bugger to work on, but uh, getting it out to work on it is a hard part. It's it's a nice radio. Well, keep us posted. All righty. Well, 73. Great signal on the Gonset GSB 100. What a fun radio. All right. Hey, Jay, you want to talk to some people? What do you think? Uh, KM5QS, K5LYN. Well, let me see if I got this one working okay. Um... I will when the amp comes up. Anyhow, that carrier down the band about one and a half K is driving me nuts. Uh, just a minute. Gone right now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Well, if anybody can hear my 65 watts right now and like to check into the boat anchor net, I'll be doing better in a minute. Wow, nobody can hear my 65 watts. That's a terrible situation. Um, what was it? A uh, while ago, earlier in the net, Lynn, uh, uh, Bob, CXG, 
he d I think he does have an email now, but I, I don't know why he didn't come back. He might have been in the middle of switching or something. Well, we'll get it figured out. Okay. I should be uh, doing a little better now. I answered you, but you didn't hear me. Yes, I do. Oh, you do have an email, Bob? Well, it's actually a Gmail, but it's the same thing. What? <laughs> okay. Well, go, go ahead and give it to Lynn. Well, that's okay. I'll look it up on QRZ. I don't know if he's got it on QRZ. Yes, he does. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, excuse me. I should quit assuming. That's good news, Bob. Yes. Go ahead, Jay. You got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Um... I get I'll, I get unconfused here in a minute. 28 days till Belton. I'm starting to get the fever. All right. Anybody else wants to check in with Bone Anchors Net? Uh, come now, please. N5 Delta Mike Charlie. Delta Mike Charlie, it's your turn. Go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, Jay. This is Doug here in uh, Bryan, Texas. November 5 Delta Mike Charlie. Not talking on uh, a boat anchor, but uh, next week it's it's going to happen. So, anyway, Jay, I'll turn it back to you. N3, uh, our correction, N5, DMC. Oh, okay, Doug. Well, we'll, you know, we'll cut you a little slack. I know you got one, so uh, that, that'll that'll work. <laughs> um, and now, carrier be darned. Um, I've got the beat cancel on, so you can. I will be able to hear you wherever you are. Anyone else for the Boat Anchors Unlimited? Come now, please. Yeah, even your modern stuff sounds good on this 930K, 5LM. <laughs> Recheck if you don't find anybody. Well, go ahead, Jim. I just wanted to uh, uh, back up for uh, 30 minutes ago uh, in, in uh, defense of Mike with his carrier. Uh, actually, uh, if you'd have dialed down uh, 75 cycles to where his, uh, where his carrier was, he was uh, perfectly on frequency and had very good audio on this old blue pizza box. And uh, although uh, he made a very long transmission, it did wander off down to approximately uh, 100 cycles down. Uh, the carrier went with him, but uh, it's just a case of, uh, <laughs> you know, the, car the carrier was where his frequency was. It's just not... Uh, nulled deep enough, evidently, or a little bit wide, uh, if you're not on his frequency. Well, uh, that's why they call them, well, that's why they're boat anchors. I mean, but a beautiful thing about boat anchors with, with all the things that go along with them um, is uh, if you don't know where you came from, you can't appreciate where you're going. Is that right? Well, something like that. But as you can well tell, I'm on the blue pizza box, and he had very nice audio, if and when he was on his frequency. And uh, that's a compliment, not a not a critique. WJ5MS. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is Mike, KL7 Charlie Delta. Did you call me there, Jay? I wanted to recheck. Oh, no, I didn't, but uh, now's as good a time as any. Go right ahead. Okay. Well, uh, I did have a, I mean, looking on the scope, I did have a little bit of carrier, and I balanced it back out, I think. It looks balanced out on the scope, and uh, I was just wondering if Jim or somebody could uh, listen around a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll keep the mic keyed, and uh, that should be able to help you a little bit. When I'm talking, it kind of muffles the, or masks the the carrier, so um, I'm going to count to five, and I'm going to uh, hold the mic down, and just count to five, and I'll be right back. I don't see any carrier at all, but you are about so Okay, that's five. Anybody that. hear any carrier? Did it get better, get worse? Go ahead. I rolled up there and heard a little bit, ka 5 L Y L. Okay. There, there, I didn't hear it. The carrier was zero beat. Uh, so I couldn't hear it. I could see it, but it was not offensive. Uh, it was it was fine. Um, and uh, before, I believe, like Jim was saying, your 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 center frequency was maybe down the band just a little bit. So that's why we could, or they could hear it. 
but um, it's old radio. I mean, she whiz. <laughs> But you sounded fine just then. You do have a little bit of upper sideband going, but um, it's an old radio. That's right. I, I can see it on the panel phone. Not enough to impact your your overall signal. Yeah, let her rip, Tater Chip. Yep. Yeah, that that'll work. That'll work. Okay, I don't want to get too far afield. Uh, anyone else for the Boat Anchors Unlimited? I I yes. For full disclosure, I am not currently on my 830. It's still a Kenwood, but it has the ability to null out the illegitimate spawn of questionable parentage that feels compelled to throw carriers on our net. So, that being said, anyone else that would care to check in, uh, come now, please. Comment. Go ahead. Hey, sorry, Jay. I'm just on a hundred watts here. My alpha hadn't warmed up, but I could see uh, Mike's uh, carrier on the panafall here. Yeah, yeah, I could too. I, I'm on the 990 now, so uh, I could see it, but it was zero beat this time, so we didn't have to listen to it. Which is a good thing. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, Anyone else for the net? Well, then I'm not getting any response. Well, let's uh, do final uh, check-ins there, and we'll go around with uh, Jay and I and Rusty. Anybody uh, wants to talk boat anchors before we wind her down tonight? K5LY in listening. I take that as a negative. Uh, Rusty, you want to do the same thing? Okay. This is WK Powerball with the last call for the bone anchors net. Anybody want to check in before we tie a ribbon on it? Come now. <laughs> All I got is a carrier. <clears throat> and I'm sure there's anybody out there with running almost legal limit that heard me. All right, Jay, tie the ribbon on it. KM52S, WK5R. Well,. Whoops. All right. If I can keep my keep my foot on the switch, we'll get her done. All right. This is the last call for the Boat Anchors Unlimited Net this Wednesday evening. Um, next week, we should be back at about 7.30 starting time because we'll be on daylight savings time. Whether you like it or not, um, it's, it's what it's going to be. So... Um, anyone else for this week's edition of the Boat Anchors Unlimited uh, so we can get her done and, and Matt can put it in the archives KM5QS uh, anyone else W5IS recheck go right ahead Doug okay I'm not on my boat anchor I'm just checking my antenna it, SWR jumped off on me a while ago when I was talking uh to Rusty, so it looks all right now. Thank you, Jay. W5I, y'all done a good job tonight. Okay, okay, Doug. Yeah, you're you're uh, you're sounding fine. It, it it's working good on this end, anyway. All right, folks. Uh, we appreciate everybody checking in. All those who participated, listened in. Uh, we uh, have a good time. We always have a good time Wednesday night listening to these old rigs and and uh, seeing what we've managed to fix or break <laughs> or have questions about one thing and another. Um, so y'all come back. And don't forget, 28 days from now, you've all got to be in Belton because that's when the fun really starts. Uh, we'll see y'all. KM5QS, thanks, and 7 threes. What a great show. K5LY and listing out. In case you didn't realize it, Jay, when you was beating on your radio earlier, it was going out over the air. No, that wasn't me. Oh, I thought you were hammering on your mic. Oh, no. No, I know better. <laughs> I know better than that. I had a good copy on them, whoever it was, but it wasn't me. I would never beat on a microphone like that. Well, the J.A. with the A.M. carrier needs to get a signal. I know he's doing it maliciously because he's parked right in the middle of the pass band, so he needs to get a signal. Well, 
I prefer it if he didn't get a signal, as long as I can get know him completely out with my beat cancel and he becomes as irrelevant as he should be. Notch filters do wonders. Yeah, I had him notched out on the 830. I love the the notch on that 830. It works like a hose. Well, I didn't have one on an 820, so that's why I just went back to the pizza box. <laughs> I got a whole ton of bricks to, to put up and give him a wall. No, I had to switch. Um, uh, I went ahead and... and turn the 830 off and switch back to the 990 because uh, I was tired of listening to that carrier down there. And he, he's coming in just a hair. He's about 2.1 or 2.3 down from center is where the carrier is coming in on mine anyway. Isn't Still that, making a racket. Isn't that exactly where you push CW when you go from a, a lower side bend? Nope. CW should, is going only going to be down like 600 cycles or so. Yeah, 6,700. Yeah, this guy is 1.7 down. Okay, Roger that. I'm looking at him right now. That would be a little stronger than what I was on earlier. Here you are. Oh, a little bit. Oh, yeah. You're, you're covering him up like a blanket. Well, you were getting the 38 watts earlier. <laughs> I'm doing a little bit better than that now. Uh, yeah, me too. 41. I got the 36800s uh, warmed up. I'm not even doing legal limit, but they are warmed up. I do. And I think I know what my breakup deal, my problem is. So uh, it wasn't in the 8:30. I think it's my foot switch. That's possible. I love my hand switch. Yeah, I think it's about time to retire this Heil. Oh Lord no. Whoops! I got a phone call. KM5 QS. No good doggy. Uh oh. Oh, Jim, good to hear you. I'm not on very often, but uh, good to hear you on. WA5MTT. Hey, Mike. Yeah, I, I ain't been on much lately either. Yeah, well, it's a thing called work. Uh, Yeah, and it's been some. Roger. Hey, like my new toy here. Yeah, I heard you on a few weeks ago with it. Sounds real good. I think I got it straightened out for the most part. What are you talking on, Jim? This is a TS-890, Lynn. Sounds good. I just switched radios, too, K5LY. I do, I do. Yeah, I did, too. What are you on, Rusty? N5DMC. I'm on the uh, Yezu FC-107M right now. Aha. That's what happened to it. Isn't that like the only one in the world? Yeah, there's probably a few more out there, but I don't know where. <laughs> I have what's called a FT-102-102, uh, Fox Tangle 102. It's by, I think it's manufactured uh, by the... Uh, Oh heck, it's a it's a real rare one. It's old ship's radio from before World War Two. FT one oh two? Yeah, yeah, Fox Tango one zero two. It's a, a marine radio comma unit <laughs> is the way the uh, owner's manual reads. Now this is the very first solid state rig, uh, all solid state rig that gave you my well, I've got three FT-102s, but nothing really? about a ship's radio. FT-102, the Acer with uh, 36146s in it. That's and, uh, right. Well, I'm going to have, let me pull this manual out here and make sure I'm saying the right thing. I don't think it's a 102. Oh, how was the Collins doing a while ago, Jim? They're doing pretty good. 
Yeah, I hadn't. Yeah, that thing, I I hadn't had it on in about three weeks. Just flipped the switch and uh, touched up the VFO a little bit. I did, I did. Yeah, it's an FT-102. That's what it says it is. Well, FT-102 is a handband radio. I know. I know, I know, I know. But it's, uh, it's, uh, this one's not. It's, uh, it's a old uh, CW radio manufacturer. I believe it was 1938. I'll be dipped in you know what. I don't think it's a Yezu, though. No, it's not. Yeah. I don't know. What did the FT Fox Tango uh, 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 outline? I mean, okay, here we go. Manufactured by the Federal Telephone and Radio Corporation, New Jersey. I do. And the uh, serial number, 440113, uh, manufacture date of 113-1945. I was wrong. Okay, it says here 167BY, uh, Bravo Yankee transmitter, so, oh well. It's got two 833s, in, or two 813s in it. Yeah. That's the first of the roll around broadcasters I'm going to get going. All I need is a uh, filament and B plus supply, and I think that's uh, it's going to be ready to go, I think. God dear. AM rig or just CW? Uh, that's a CW rig, uh, preceded by the 150 AY, I believe. Uh, but uh, it's an old CW rig uh, from uh, the Liberty ship Jeremiah O'Brien, and the uh, that ship still still uh, 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 it's still active at the uh, ship stay in uh, the. Uh, San Francisco Bay Area. That's where it's from. I don't know why the the thing ended up out here at at my house. I don't know. That's a lot of documentation. Hey Jim, how's this sound now? I uh, I turned up the uh, the scope and worked on it a little more to do you, do you detect as much carrier, or about the same, or less. I'll see any now, uh, Mike. Okay, you just gotta you gotta know how to run an oscilloscope. You can make it so fine that uh, you can take out. I mean, I can't get it no better than this. <laughs> well, I just it was it was pretty wide, and I could hear it, you know, and and see it on my scope. So I knew you wanted to know. Oh yeah, I wanted to I wanted to work like it can. You know, if it can't work no better, then that's that's one thing, but. If it's just an adjustment, then hey, I got to make it if I can. I think I helped it. I think you got it. Say, hey, Jim. Yes, sir. Y'all didn't see any carrier on my uh, Central Electronics 10A. No, negative, no carrier. <laughs> That's amazing. 1952. Yeah, you might have had a little extra mic gain, cause, but other than that, it was fine. Okay, I could have pulled it down. It, it was, uh, it was moving the meter. Yeah, Roger. Mike, I can still see just a little bit of carry on the Flex 5000. Well, you know, a little bit of carry on the Flex 5000. I, I, like I said, uh, uh, I can't do no better than what I did. Roger, understand. I'm just, uh, I'm just advising you. Next thing I need to work on is the upper sideband, the sideband rejection. And Lim, Lynn's given me a, a pretty cool technique, and I just haven't got around to it. Now that I've got the lid off this HD44, I'll probably come in here tomorrow and play with that a little bit. Well, Mike, uh, Nick commented on my sideband suppression this evening, and that's how I set this one up. Yeah, and, and it was a positive comment, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the low life way of doing it sometimes works. Makes total sense to me, and uh, you don't need a lot of instrumentation to 
to deal with it. You don't need a Flex 5000 either. No, just put the microphone in front of the speaker, receiver on upper sideband, transmitter on lower, tuned for minimum feedback. The mic or carrier almost disappeared that time. Well, I didn't do anything with it. I mean, it just moves around a little bit, I guess. Uh, there's two carrier balance pots uh, on, the, on the top of the chassis. You have to take the lid off. And uh, it's got enough fingernail polish on it that you can't tell where it was set at one time. But whoever had this rig before me, you know, they try to mark it. And uh, it's been marked so many times it just looks like it's covered with fingernail polish. QSL? Yeah, Roger. I wouldn't worry about it because it kind of comes and goes. Well, the other thing is a lot of people have put in better carrier balance pots, you know, to make it easier to keep the carrier balanced out. I haven't done that, but that, that does uh, make it a lot easier to keep the carrier out of there. So what are they, Lynn? Finer pots? In other words, uh, takes more turns, like four to one turn or something? Well, well, better quality, you know, and newer, and yeah, not so precise, because like when I try to balance the carrier out, boy, I mean, you, you, move, you move it a hair, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's all the difference in the world, whereas if it's not such a fine tuning, I'll tell you who knows the answer to that, WD5JKO Jim, he's replaced his. Yeah, okay, well, it wouldn't be much of a chore here, uh, they got a bottom cover too, and uh I would assume, and and they're mounted with the nut on top of the chassis, so, you know, you loosen the nut and just push them through, and uh, I, I may have to check out what the values are and get me some new pots and see if that helps. Yeah, you might check with Jim. He replaced all his, and he said it made all the difference in the world. K5LYN. Yeah, KB5ZIV. KB5ZIV. Yeah, KB5ZIV. Yeah, KB5ZIV. Yeah, KB5ZIV. Yeah, KB5ZIV. Who's a numb nut that needs uh, some coax wrapped around his neck? Oh, I don't. It's just a. Uh, same Hello, crap man. we've been putting up with for a long Hello, time. Jim. I'm late in for the net to Dale K5 WOF there. Just, uh, piping in and saying hello to all, and I uh, hope it was a good net there, K5 WOF. <laughs> Get her tuned up in a minute. Oh, Jim. Yeah. Did uh, Did you say you uh, had a Kenmore uh, eight ninety? Yeah, Steve. I got a Kenmore eight ninety. Well, tell me about it. It's a big old radio. I assume you like it. So far, I like it. Well, good enough. You have to tell me all about it at Belton. It, well, you, you, there's a lot of RTFM on this one. <laughs> I'll work on it. Do I now? I'll have to work on that for a minute. I I'm old and slow. Okay. I'll get there. It's the normal thing <laughs> amateurs never do when they get a new radio. Yeah, read the manual. Oh, never. You will on this one. Oh, I I'm sure. I tell you, when I bought that uh, 7300, I did a little reading. Well, that one's a little easier to set up than this one, I'm sure. Uh, is that right? Yeah. And those manuals generally don't read uh, or read good in good prose. Yeah. Well, this thing here will make you read the manual. Okie dokie.
Is, is that about the size of an old 830, or is it a little larger? It's a little larger. Okay. I know the UPS guy set it down on the floor, and when I went to pick it up to take it to the truck, I went, holy crap. Aha, uh -huh. I thought you had a big transformer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you got a real radio. Yeah, it's it's pretty heavy. Well, at least you won't push a button and push it off the desk. That's for sure. You'd have to have a hell of a microphone on it and drag it off the desk, too. Well, let's hope not.